do in the bud. In males. In males, but there's also there's also literature that advocated it in female genitalia, applying carbolic Why acid. Why is it done in a way? This was this was done so that you could basically stamp out masturbation because it was thought, and this was the orthodox science of the time, that masturbation was the origin, the cause of all manner of physiological and psychological disorder. We're talking about epilepsy and palsy and schizophrenia. It was literally thought that there was an analog to chain smoking. You would, you would, you would <laughs> basically shave years off of your life by masturbation. He truly believed that through, ma through circumcision, you could, be, you could live a life of Christian rectitude and, and he has all kinds of scientific data to back that up. Now, since then, our reasons for circumcising have evolved to reflect whatever the great anxiety of the age is. But to give Dr. Ke Kellogg his due, he at least acknowledged the erogenous potential of the foreskin that she's mentioned. He at least acknowledged the pain that was involved in circumcision, and which at that it, time was okay. a, an aversion and, therapy. And I, I, want, I want to get Paul in on okay. this. Um, you, would you talk about what happened with you and your son and what you experienced? Absolutely. I became pregnant and I quickly found out I was pregnant with a male child. I was very excited about that. And his father, although he were, was an Italian-American, was a circumcised Italian-American born in this country, as opposed to his own father who was of European descent and was not circumcised in Europe. And when our son was born, I went to speak to my obstetrician who was head of obstetrics at Einstein and to my then pediatrician who I had just hired who was head of pediatrics at Einstein Hospital, a Jewish hospital, and they both said to me, do not circumcise this child. It is completely unnecessary, it is cosmetic, and it's horrible to do to an infant. And I said, I know, but oh, gee, his father circumcised and all the little boys will laugh at him. And I actually remember being, I was very small chested, in high school and the girls made fun of me and I remember that awful feeling so I said I don't want him to feel like that and I had a midwife she was the only one who would agree to circumcise him and she said but I'll only do it if you watch and I'm only giving him a semi circumcision but you have to watch so and this really I this is just as if it happened yesterday they took this little six pound peanut and they strapped him down on a gurney and he had his little arms and his little legs strapped down. And my son had a very long neck and a very pointy head. So imagine this long, turtle-headed little boy looking up. And then they took a metal cup and they inserted it between his penis and his foreskin so that the, basically the foreskin got all engorged and stretched and stretched and stretched. And he was screaming. He was turning blue. And I'm behind glass. And then I start to feel the nausea. And I was like, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? And she's making, she's making certain that I'm watching. She only gave him what's known as a semi-circumcision, which is only taking off the very top ridge of the foreskin. So now as an adult male, my son's penis, he describes as a hard boiled egg wearing a very high turtleneck sweater. So he, he certainly is glad that he still has foreskin because he enjoys who he is as a young man and his sexuality. But it was truly horrible. And whenever I meet anyone who's pregnant, after discussing the good things about breastfeeding, I immediately say, please don't circumcise your male child. And I will then bring all the literature I can find about it. Why do they do it in a way that's painful? What's the point of inflicting the pain? Well, I don't think there is a point in inflicting the pain. You bring up the word barbaric, which I think is interesting, uh, partly because the word itself means something other people do, which of course is not accurate, it's something we do, but also because the people doing it don't believe that they are, in fact, inflicting that much pain. And it's really predicated on this whole culture of ignorance. They believe that it's as benign as a pedicure, and they believe that there are benefits that are like an inoculation. So when you're talking about the anger and things that you feel about this, a lot of that gets subverted into legitimizing it. Most of the people who are determining medical curricula in this country, most of the people who are determining public yeah. health policy, are circumcised men. And they don't want to face that anger. They yeah. don't want yeah. to face and that. We're not getting at this. And I really but I want, I want, society, I want to get to know, but men, men are in denial about this. Yes? Absolutely. And, the reason, and you have to be in denial but about it. How can you face the fact that so much of your sensitivity that you were mm -hmm. supposed to have is exactly. gone but and I'm, taken from you forever? Because but you don't, you don't know it. it. You well, we're telling it. them that, and they, people, men won't face because the fact. Because men are nothing embarrassed. They can do about it. There's nothing they can do about it. They're embarrassed. Their parents did this to them. 
So what are you supposed to say? Mommy and Daddy were bad and cruel to me? And then you'll hear this, but I'm okay. I enjoy sex. Absolutely. And men, men feel that they have adequate sexual and neurological function. And they feel, therefore, what they have is something they confer as a benefit to other people. And I think that that's how it is also perpetuated. Go ahead, Laura. There are a few things. When I do my shows, and some a man from Ireland, from Sweden, anywhere where this isn't done, because what Americans don't realize is around the world that 85% of the men in the world are intact. They are not circumcised. It's mostly around the world very orthodox Jews and the Muslim men who circumcise. And I got involved with this. I am a Jewish woman with an intact son. It was the hardest decision. I went from being an obedient little girl to a courageous, bold woman who will now speak to anyone about this issue. Because I can say this, if I had a scalpel in my hand right this minute, and I said that I was coming to cut your genitals, and I will include the women because we could be in a country where that's done, you would run out of here and you would never come back. The trust in our relationship will have been broken forever. And I ask, when are we gonna treat our precious newborns the way we would wanna be treated? Every mother, when that baby's born, counts every toe and every finger and wants to know that they're completely whole. And there's one midwife I know, she has pictures of every animal and mammal around and she says, every mammal, it is a wound to the maternal infant bond. And I can't tell you how many women have said to me, you know, that they were told to get a grip and to turn it over to the father, that the boy's going to look like him. And I can say this, when they started doing this here, we had a generation where the boys were circumcised and the fathers were not. And to end this, we have to have another transitional generation where the boys will be intact and the fathers won't be. All right. Now you raised a point that I think is really important. For me, it's a central question. I'd like to reiterate this and then ask you all to respond. And one of the reasons I wanted women on this panel, well, two reasons. First of all, uh, as, as intimate partners, we're meant to look out for each other to protect each other's sexual health. Mm -hmm. This is certainly an issue for heterosexual women, just as it is for men. But I wanted women on this show when I asked this question. Laurie and Paul, there's no doubt in my mind that if somebody held you down and cut away part of your body while you were screaming and helpless, uh, you'd be calling the police. Absolutely. And the society would demand that that person be put mm -hmm. in jail. And we mm -hmm. would see, we just finished, we would see it as a grotesque sexual assault. And not only that, not only that, but everyone who stood around and watched while you were screaming and didn't do anything to stop it, they would all be charged with a crime too. And the question, and I think, you know, this is such an important question for anyone interested in men's issues, is, is how is it that a procedure, a procedure, an attack on a woman, which would be understood to be a grotesque sexual assault, when it's done to a male, is seen as a routine medical procedure that can be justified. That double standard has to be addressed. Because American society, first off, we already know there's a slant against men, and we've become hugely feminist in this society. There's always been a slant against men. Is a slant <laughs> against sexuality in general. This is a very repressed society. Anything to do with sex or pleasure is still considered weird and taboo. If you have a perfect human being, how is it then, if you believe in God, that God, who has no error, makes a perfect human being except for the foreskin? Explain that. It's like saying, you know what, God is perfect, but I don't like this ear, so let me take this ear off. You know, what, I, you know, you know what I've been told, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've been told that, that breast cancer can be eradicated. No woman ever has to get breast cancer. We just remove breast tissue from infant girls. and right. breast, It's ridiculous. It's the idea that you would cut off a it's healthy insane. part of the body is people insane. People do that, Mel. People do that. Mm -hmm. Women who mm -hmm. have histories of breast cancer will remove their breasts out of fear you know of dying. You know what? An adult wants to do that, let the adult make the choice. That's right. We're talking about infants who have no choice in what's being done. And we are talking about an assault on males that isn't done Absolutely. on females. And so is it is it just that the puritanical society that doesn't like sexuality it's or ignorance it and it's it's also people do it because my dad's that way and because it my, my best friends that way and ooh, look at that oh my gosh ooh, it's funny looking what I think it really is instructive to look at the language and when you're talking about taking that anger and taking that sadness and turning it into something that becomes legitimate in fact circumcision isn't even an adequate way to describe Absolutely. it if you're taking it you're taking a bodily part away 
that language refers to that, a rhinoplasty or a mastectomy, that's something you can identify. If you were to talk about it, and general mutilation is in fact a neutral term. We like to think about it as being cruel, but you are permanently changing from external the genitals of the person. Or if you talk about it as an amputation, that's accurate. Correct. So what's interesting is to see how circumcision is in fact a euphemism. And when Lori and I you were bet. at, where we, we were at a community discussion advocating or, or discussing circumcision as a